Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you have seen us admire, reverse engineer and power up a Soviet-era space clock flown in the Soyuz TM spacecraft. So far we have used the clock just by itself, simply connected to a power supply. But in normal usage, it's connected to the spacecraft by a 19-pin connector. What do all those connections do? And, and then this is how the input connector is wired up. Um, basically, pairs of pins are connected together, so it's a 19-pin connector, but you really have nine useful ah, signals. Ah, it's redundant in its pinout. Yeah, I don't know if that's um, for more current or... I, I bet you it's for if vibration yeah. and so, uh, so reliability. You've got, you've, got, you've got your power and ground, um, you've got your, your two relay contacts, mm -hmm. and then you have um, signals that are going to the isolation transformers, probably the input and output signal. Alright, so Master Ken provided me with his detailed reverse engineering of the connector, and I have it all wired out. So, out of this we have coming power, 24 volt DC. We have the relay output, which is right now connected to nothing, that's the red cable. We have the external clock, that's for a higher precision clock, in blue. And we have some wonderful Yankee buttons here, they're actually from IBM. Uh, that is the start, uh, stop and clear for the chronometer, we think. So let me hook it up and we'll play with the advanced clock functions. That way. Okay, so our pseudo military connector is hooked up. So here we go. On. And we are counting. And so all you can do from the chip, you know, from the ship really, is start the, the, the chronometer. Halt it. Oh, I can restart it then probably. Nope, I cannot. You have to proceed through the state machine. Yeah, you have to clear it. So it's it's the same as the button. So, huh. Start. Halt. Clear. Yay! <laughs> Why? Well, I, I saw the start stop would work, but nope. Can't restart it, huh? So they use that for uh, rocket timing, burn yeah. timing. Alright. And I think also re entry. Yeah, and the circuit is, is uh, humongously complicated to uh, get the stuff. We don't exactly now know how it works. Well, we kind of know, but the input circuit, as reverse engineered by Ken, goes. So it's all isolated through a transformer, and there's a sort of a bizarre active amplifier at the beginning, which we think is um, to produce a clean pulse or a monostable pulse, something of that ilk. Yeah, so we just discovered something else, is that when the ship is under control and starts the clock, you can't actually stop it from the front panel. And when it stops it, you can't clear it. So those two, actually, how exclusive are they? If I do that one, can I stop it from here? Yeah. So, so yeah, I believe these ones are dominant over the Yeah, they are dominant and then I cannot clear it. Once once the ship touches it, you're out of the loop. Oh. This I can start. Stop and then I can clear it from there. Yeah. But as soon as I start here and I do this, I can't clear it anymore. Full of little details. So can you 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 saw the the the, the complicated uh, yeah, board to do that? Yeah, there's like two separate state machines, one for the button and one for the for the external. All right. Uh, so what else do we want to do? Do we want uh, so the relay? We could do something with it. So we are running out of time. So we made a simple experiments to check if the we have the 
relay contact wired okay it's just on the continuity tester here so if I guess I put it at 8 give myself a little bit of time doom 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 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 go go okay and then 45 seconds it should beep assuming I did the wiring right which is <laughs> not proven yet Maybe I'll put on the safety glasses just <laughs> five four three two one oh I wired it correctly and in my experience that goes on for eight seconds and then it resets there you go seven seconds We had a little contest over in Patreon and what people wanted to do. And this didn't exactly win, but I don't think they knew which lamp I was going to use. Uh, so I had this little lamp. It's actually a night lamp from the Soviet era, I guess, uh, which I got from Ukraine uh, to celebrate the uh, space program. So it has a little rocket on top. and. On the base, you can see somewhere where it's, where it's Lenin over there. Union, 1917 revolution, and I'm sure there is a symbolic. So of course the hardworking peasants, the electrification, and so on and so forth. I'm sure this means something. And over here, Gagarin. All right, so we're going to use the alarm to light up this clock, but uh, since it's a night lamp and it's not that great, I have upgraded it to LED. So over here it goes. All there is to command the spacecraft is one relay contact, which comes out, out here. So I have it uh, go through another bigger relay that has many contacts, so I, I can trigger many things, which we're going to see in a second. All right, so Carl, you ready for a demo? I'm ready. Uh, so I put it at midnight, so I have to reset the clock, which is always a confusing operation. So I have to go one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we will have 10 seconds. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> Thank you. So it, it only the contact's only on for eight seconds. You will have to have a latching thing if you wanted to trigger something that lasts longer in your base, spaceship. But that's that's as basic as it goes. Just one relay contact. So if uh, Ken's reverse engineering is correct, there is one important function of the clock that we have not tested yet. And that's the ability to uh, externally clock uh, the Soyuz clock. So it receives a more precise signal from the master uh, clock on the ship rather than rely on, it, on its internal crystal. Uh, Ken tells me it comes through those two wires and then we are quite uh, unsure of what should come in there. Ken spent a lot of time to try to figure out what that signal actually is. There is an isolation transformer to isolate signals from the ship from signals inside the clock and it goes into this transistor which drives what looks like an integrator circuit. Uh, when there's no signal, uh, the thing is conducting and so the, the, the capacitor is not charged. When there is some signal, this thing is off and it gets charged through the diode. So that should integrate the signal, maybe pre prevents glitches. And then that should bring it to a level that's good enough to flip a gate. And then it has all this complicated circuitry. It figures out if it has a signal and if it can find it every 0.8 seconds, it'll take over 
and eventually drive the clock automatically instead of the internal signal. Uh, and also, uh, it tells me that it's uh, more, most likely going to be a 1 hertz circuit, which would make sense because it would be compatible with the previous mechanical clock, which probably expected 1 hertz. So I had it hooked up to a signal at 1 hertz, and we were not having any luck in uh, having it work. And a telltale sign that it works would be that little comma here should extinguish when it's externally clocked. And then we couldn't get that comma to disappear. So what we did is look inside the clock uh, right at the integrator. So what you see right now on the scope is our input signal, that's a square wave at you know, one pulse per second. Uh, the green line is the one we are interested in. This is the uh, signal out of the integrator. And the yellow line is the clock. Right now it's generated internally. And you could see right away what our problem is. Is that you know, the signal makes it through. Uh, here we got the good 28 volts. But it only makes a blip to the integrator. What it wants is probably not pulses at one hertz but you no know, one second burst of pulses at much higher frequency so let me increase the frequency over here you can go to three four five hertz okay so now i'm at 10 hertz and what i expect to happen is that when those goes close enough the integrator will go up and will switch to a level that's higher than five volts and here you see it coming there you go, right, and here's 400 hertz, and we have attained about 5 volts. And sure enough, if we look at the clock now, the comma has disappeared. So now if I turned my modulation off, the comma is in, it's clocked by the quartz inside the clock. And now I turn my modulation in. And it's clocked out, but of course I have, I have a continuous wave of 400 hertz now, so it's not moving a bit, but it's seeing the signal, so we're almost there. So we are getting closer, um, so I'm generating bursts here uh, every one second, and it's recognizing it as a digital level, and sure enough, now it is counting, but it's counting at half the rate every two seconds, so we're, it wants half pulses every half second. So um, I, 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 I dilated time by two. So that's easy though. <laughs> so in order to do that, I need to, I know what to do. Okay, fine, see you in a second. Well, we figured out what the clock wants on the uh, blue input signal. So right now it has the comma still running on its uh, original oscillator. And I have a whole bunch of HP equipment to generate the right signal. And here, you actually see what it wants. This is, it wants 400 hertz in bunches uh, of uh, at two hertz repetition. Uh, so right now I am at uh, 20 volts and I'm going to bump the signals to 28. And you'll see that's the integrator inside the clock that's going to sense it and now I'm at 28 volts and now it senses it. So if you look now at here I have the external clocking which right now it's at zero so that's its own internal clock and I'm going to turn the external clocking. It's being recognized by the clock and it generates uh, the one hertz signal that drives the clock. So inverse transition disappears, takes uh, a second or two and it goes back on its internal clocking and here it's clocked by the central clock of the ship again. It has switched to um, its uh, external clocked mode so the, the warning comma has disappeared. So, so watch the comma in the corner. I disable external clocking and switch back to internal clocking and I switch external clocking on and the comma disappears it's now it's clocked by the main clock in the ship so actually the normal mode is external clock with no uh, comma 
displaying. So which brings us to you know, how precise can it be when it's uh, externally clocked? Well, it only depends on how precise your uh, clock source is. So that's the CEO clock from Marcel. So here you go, I make an atomic uh, international egg timer and alarm clock that you probably can't eat. <laughs>